In today's video, we're gonna be designing the scrollable fitness app in Figma. It's pretty simple, so let's just get right to it. So let's start by creating a frame and I'm gonna choose iPhone 16 Pro just cause that's the phone that I've got. It always makes it easier if you can check it on your own phone. So we're gonna make it black for now and we're gonna go down here into plugins and we're gonna search Apple status. Now, if we search that and we go over to assets, we can get the status bar for iPhone and drop that in. Now, if we just make sure that's centered and stuck to the top, then we can take the background off and then we'll go down here to the color and we'll select that to white because we're working with the dark mode theme. Now with our main frame selected, let's actually change the background color to 1818.1818. If we click on the status bar and go over to prototype, we can make sure that it's fixed to the top of the screen. And let's create a rectangle down like this. And let's just make it 120 pixels tall. It doesn't really matter, but we'll go over to gradient and we're gonna add a sort of gradient fade in effect so if we just go black and white so we can see it and we're going to change the white to black but we're going to change the opacity of this to zero and you can't really see this right now but this is just going to create a shadow at the top of the screen and we're going to drag that up to our fixed section and make sure it's positioned underneath our status pressing command and d let's duplicate it and we're going to swing it around 180 degrees and we're going to position it at the bottom of the page. Make sure we lock all those fixed layers and then we're going to create a frame that's the entire width. If we go over to the width dimensions, we're going to take off 16 pixels. We've got minus 16 and if we center that, then we've got 8 pixels on each side. We'll give this a corner radius of 16 and we will give it a background color of 444444. We'll give it a stroke white and we'll make that 15% opacity. We'll just drag that up so it's 8 pixels from the top and from all the sides and if you hold alt you can kind of see the sizes come up so you know where you're working with. We're just going to rename some of our layers that we have so we are aware what everything is, keep everything clean and if we select our bottom gradient we're actually going to press command and copy into our activity frame and we're going to position it at the bottom. Let's get an image in here. So we'll head over to Unsplash and we'll search something like abstract running. I've kind of gone with this motion blur theme for this. So let's paste in an image from there. Using frame, let's create a button. So we're gonna make this 48 pixels width and height. And we'll give this a background color just so we can see it right now. We'll turn the corner radius all the way up to make it a circle. And if we head over to here, this is cool icons. This is where I get a lot of my icons on Figma. You can get many different arrow types. So let's select this large arrow, make sure it's positioned in the center. And we are gonna change the stroke width of that to 1.5, just cause I think it looks a little cleaner. Then we'll just move it over to the side and we'll just get it positioned 32 pixels from the side and anywhere you really want up at the top just somewhere underneath there let's go 16 pixels underneath and we'll call it back button let's drag it up to our fixed section and we'll position that above our gradient and then we'll actually select our top gradient and change the opacity of it to a hundred percent now we can really see it now we'll add some text now i've gone with this geist medium 14 pixels minus three letter spacing and we're gonna just type in 300 cals. Using Shift and A, we'll make that an auto layout and we will give that a background color so we can see it. And uh, we'll make that black for now and we'll give it a corner radius of four. We'll go down to stroke and we'll give that a white and we'll also change that to 15%. We'll just reduce the opacity of the background color and we'll go back into cool icons and let's take this icon of a heart and we're going to paste that in here. We're going to resize it down so it's about 18 pixels and we'll go over to the weight of the stroke and change that to 1.5. Now if we select the main auto layout layer then we can adjust some of these sizings. We'll make the gap 4 and we're going to kind of do this by eye. So let's say 12 padding on the left and then on the right we'll do 16. 
Now let's go back to the fill and let's actually give this a gradient. I think this is going to work nicer. So if we go 999, then if we kind of angle it slightly and then we reduce the opacity of that to 10. Now it's going to be very subtle, but if we go to effects, background blur, then we'll add a background blur of four and that's going to sit on top of our image just a lot nicer. If we select our icon, let's actually give it this yellow color. You can color it whatever you want, but this is what I'm going with. Get that positioned over to the left, 32 pixels, and then let's duplicate it out. This one is going to be for our timer. So let's select our icon. We'll go back over to cool icons and we want to choose this timer icon. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to paste to replace. We'll go into it and we'll resize it, make sure it's the same size. And we'll go down to the stroke width and make sure that's 1.5. Then we'll also grab that yellow color and we'll apply that over to this icon as well. And all we've got to do now is change the text to something like, let's just say 35 minutes. We'll select both of these and let's actually adjust the padding on the top and bottom to eight. And with both of these selected, we'll press Shift and A to make these an auto layout and we'll make sure the gap between them is eight. Using our text tool, we are going to add a title to the card. So let's use something like Max Effort Sprint. Now we'll go 32 pixel size and I'm actually going to choose a different font here. The font that I choose here isn't actually available in Figma natively, but you can get it from this website here as a trial version, which is what I did. And if you ever want to use it in some actual project, then it is a paid font, so you will have to pay for it. But the font that I've gone with is this new edge, and we're going to make that 32 pixels. And let's reduce the letter spacing on that just because I think it looks quite cool. We'll add another text box. Now we'll drag this out to give ourselves a box and we want to write a bio about Sprint. Using ChatGPT, we can just get something like this. Also note the D5, D5, D5 color that I've given this. And we'll just make sure that's positioned correctly underneath everything. Let's say eight pixels under, 32 pixels from the side. We're always making sure everything is positioned as we go. Now we'll get that moving together and we'll actually make that a frame. So if we select all the things, right click frame selection and we'll make sure that's positioned 32 pixels from the bottom of our activity card that we're creating. Now holding command, we can actually drag out the size of that frame to meet the edges of our activity box and the bottom. And we want to go down to effects, background blur, and we'll go over to fill, we'll make it black, but we'll give that 1% opacity. And you can see that background blur coming through, which just helps with contrast sitting on top of any image. We're almost done now. We just need to make a start button. So let's use a frame. We'll make this 86 in size, width and height. We'll go over to our fill and we want to make sure it's that same yellow color as our icon so we'll just paste that in for our fill and we'll give it a full corner radius just to make it in a circle if we copy our title text and paste that into the frame let's just rename it to start and we'll make sure that's positioned right in the center and we'll give it this color of 282828 and whilst we're doing that let's copy and paste that and we'll paste that color to our icon up here just to keep things consistent Let's drag this down here and we're going to give it a stroke of four pixels and we're going to change the position of that to outside and we're going to change the opacity of that to 10. And we'll just make sure it's positioned equal distance between that and the edge of the page. We'll create another circle. This time we're going to go to effects layer blur and we're going to crank this away up to make some kind of cool lighting effect so let's choose our yellow and we're going to drag this just kind of behind and near our buttons we'll position it behind it and then we'll go over to appearance and we'll give that a soft light blending mode and that will sit subtly behind the button drawing more attention to it now we're pretty much done the final thing really is just to make it into a prototype so let's go to activity we'll frame that selection and we'll rename that to scroll. 
Using shift and aim, we'll make that an auto layout and we'll duplicate our activity two more times. We'll change the direction of the alt layout to down and the gap of eight. And then we wanna right click on that and frame that as a selection. And this time we're just gonna expand that so it fills our entire frame. And we'll drag that to the bottom of our frame as well. And then this is going to give us our window that we can scroll in. So on that frame we just made, if we go prototype settings, overflow vertical, now we can scroll in our prototype. Oh yeah. Look at that. Now all that's left to do is make the cards your own. So you can add in any images you want, change some of the text. I added this little week one indicator above the start button and I tried it out with some different images and it looks pretty good. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along and hopefully you enjoyed it and got something out of it. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. Let me know in the comments what other tutorials you want me to do and subscribe if you're into learning this sort of thing and design in general. I'll catch you guys soon with another video. Thanks for watching.